guys, it's Ariel over here at Finest, where today I just wanted to answer the somewhat regular questions I get about the cameras I use to make these videos that you guys are watching. First of all, I would like to say that I don't think the main um, key to good photography is the camera. I do, I do not think the camera is the main key. I think it is learning how to take good pictures, but for some things they do require specific gear to be able to make them possible. Um, the reason I say that is because I'd hate for anybody to go spend a lot of money on the gear without learning how to take pictures if that's why you're interested because I have seen people with literally $70,000 camera setups who don't get good photos that, that probably aren't even as good as some that you've taken with the cell phone. So you do have to learn what you're doing, but then <laughs> having some equipment does help. So videos you see on this channel are usually recorded with this camera body. If you've never used a um, DSLR, that would be a digital single lens reflex camera. That's what DSLR stands for. This is the body. There you go. So this part right here, I try to keep that facing down because I don't ever want to get dust in there, is the body. It, it takes different lenses. This is a little fixed 50 millimeter lens. Um, this one is actually the one, one lens I use the least but it is a fabulous uh, portrait lens. So um, some pet portraits and definitely people portraits and weddings and baby photos and stuff like that. When I do that, which isn't a whole lot, that this is the lens I use for that. This big guy that you saw on here at the start, that's um, the one I use for pretty much every wildlife photo you have ever seen. Um, swap these back actually because I usually keep my big lens on there. You don't want to get any dust <coughs> between these um, between the body and the lens. This is oh all of my gear is Canon. Um, Nikon makes wonderful cameras too. I have good friends who are excellent photographers who have Nikon stuff as well. I think they both do a great job but once you have one or the other you're probably not going to switch because then all your lenses and stuff would no longer be interchangeable like this. So all of my stuff is Canon so I can use it all together. Um, so this is the uh, lens that is probably most pictures you see of burly or moose or chickadees or grizzly bears or whatever else um, are with this lens and it does have a zoom from 100 millimeters to 400 millimeters. The camera body is the Canon 80D. It is uh, I guess kind of the top of the line of the amateur cameras. It's definitely not in either quite the quality or the price range of some of the pro models but it works very very well for everything I have ever wanted it to do and I'm extremely happy with it. For many years when I first started taking photos when I was still in my teens, I shot with a 30D which was an, an earlier version of this and I was happy with it too but I used it for many years until it was completely shot and um, the shutter was worn out. It wouldn't take pictures anymore for all practical purposes. Um, anyway, so 80D body, it's the 100 to 400 um, lens. This is an image stabilized lens so it does have a bit of a ability to help stabilize if you're shaking as you take pictures but if you want to make it really solid um, you're probably going to want on a tripod. Now I very rarely have time to do this with most wildlife but this tripod is a uh, Vanguard. It's not terribly pricey but it is really really good and really sturdy. Um, you can adjust it higher or lower but there you can see how even with this big lens you know it's got a ball head so I can change the, the angle and lock it you know at whatever um, whatever position I want to be taking photos. It spins very smoothly like this. The, uh, the clips to um, you know, adjust the legs like that, super easy to use. And again, it's sturdy. This lens is heavy and it's this lens is the, the most expensive piece of gear I've got. So I would not want to put it on something I thought it was going to tip over on. But you can see, you know, there's, it, it's showing no signs of tipping over. So if I'm, um, if I'm somewhere, I just put that on the top so I can set the camera down when I'm not using the tripod. 
where I have time to use that for wildlife, that's really handy because this does get tired after a while. If you're watching something with this fully extended and, and photographing and don't have a table to put your elbows on and, and taking pictures for a while, um, that, that does get heavy and it is really nice to have the break of the tripod. What I use the tripods for more are actually filming videos like this um, because this is very capable of holding the smaller lenses and so it does that as well and so that lets me set it up in the house or in the garden or in the kitchen or wherever and do videos for you guys um in a minute i'll show you the lens i use for most of those but it is filming at the moment the other few things i've got um these camera bodies take battery packs oh and i've got links if you want to know the specific things that i use every day um if you go to amazon.com slash shop there is a camera gear category on my um, store list there, and that has everything I use. So these cameras, you know, normally come with one battery. I have four or five extra because I want to have fully charged ones. I can always swap out as I kill batteries. Um, so that's a spare battery. Uh, it's a charger. Um, just pops it in there like that plugs into the wall, recharges, or I actually have an adapter. I can um, use this plug and uh, adapt it into the cigarette lighter in my van and recharge batteries that way as well. And um, some of my batteries are the original Canon brand, and then some are this Wasabi Power, which you'll see linked there. I've had, I've had no noticeable difference in the many years I've been using them between these and the original Canon brand, and while Canon makes awesome stuff, their extra batteries are crazy pricey, and these are much cheaper, and they work just as well as near as I can tell from my experience. And I use them hard, and I've recharged these all probably literally quite a few thousand times. Um, Camera cards I like because sometimes if you're taking photos fast or video, the uh, speed at which things can be written to the the card is affected a bit by the card. I have been very happy with the SanDisk Extreme Pro. This is a 64 gigabyte. Back when I first I got a digital camera, one gigabyte was a huge card that hardly anybody had. Now I've got uh, quite a few 64s. Um, I think I've got four of these, so again, I can swap out as I fill things or whatever and not have to worry about running out of space, because video takes a lot of space, more than photos. That is that gear. Um, the other thing you'll see me use when you see backpacking videos, or like the other day when Burley and I went on our hike and the, the video was so jerky, um, as we were doing some training practice, is this little camera. This is my baby camera. And it, I have it in this awesome little pouch, which actually has, let me not drop it there, has this little Velcro um, thingy on the back. And what I do with that, why this is perfect, is because if I have a camera or if I have a backpack on, I can, can Velcro that right around the shoulder strap. And I walk and do all my backpacking with this camera right here. So that at a moment's notice, I can unzip it. This is you know still on my backpack and pull this camera out and use it. This is a Sony PowerShot, uh, or not PowerShot, that's a Canon brand, Sony RX100. Um, this is the second model. I think they're up to having a fifth or a sixth model now, so this is quite a few generations old. I, I love it. I don't know if there's a noticeable difference in a lot of the performance things with the newer ones. I went with this one because I wanted a camera that was small and compact and that I could carry that easily and that was light for backpacking. Uh, because this is a lot of weight um, if you're going to be walking 20 miles a day or multiple days in a row. But I still want to be able to shoot fully manually without having to like click through menu buttons forever because I do normally shoot fully manually with this. I have been for years. I just like the control of that. Once you get used to it, it's so much better than auto. And so I wanted that ability in a small camera. And there's a few that have that option, but this is one of the best and one of the smallest. If you look at these brand new, especially the, the latest model, they're pretty pricey. Um, they're, I think, maybe close to $1,200. My tip on that would be, because I find these older models, this was the newest model at one point when I first got one. I think I'm on my third identical one of these because over time I do break them just because I'm hard on them. I use them a lot and I'm out in the weather and in rough conditions and sand and dirt and dust and all that kind of stuff a lot. So anyway, I have broken a few. Since the first one, I have not bought a new one. You can often find uh, refurbished or um, 
yeah, refurbished ones either through Amazon or probably eBay, stuff like that. I've had excellent success with refurbished models and buying an older model, which lets you get a camera that basically works like a $1,200 camera for two or three hundred dollars, depending what the, uh, the current prices are and which refurbished ones are available at the moment. So this little guy I love. And this does, not only lets me shoot fully manual as something this size, it prints excellent photos. I've printed photos off of this up to um, 20 inches by 30 inches on a wall and they look good. Um, of course, this could print, you know, higher quality, a little larger, though that's about, maybe I did a 20 by 40 print one on, off of this one, but I think that was about the biggest. There's the clock. Well, when people ask me how I sleep with that, you know what, you get used to it. I don't ever hear it. I'm a super sound sleeper anyway, but I never hear it in the night. Even during the daytime, I don't hear it actually because I, I'll, it'll start ringing and I'll think, huh, that should have been like, whatever, eight o'clock, but I only heard it ring two dings. So apparently I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, back to cameras. So I've been super happy with this camera. Um, it does not have a, uh, well, it does have a hot shoe, so you could attach extra flashes and stuff, but it doesn't have a removable lens, so you're stuck with the built-in lens here. But this is um, Zeiss glass. It is a very good lens. It's part of why the camera is expensive, and it does excellent video and photo work as well, and you can see how little and slim this is. And again, I have a link to this in my store along with all the other camera gear that I use. So I have been extremely happy with this. Um, again, I have extra cards for it and extra batteries. It makes it snug, and you probably can't see in this little case because it's dark, but there's a little Velcro-y pouch inside here, and in there I can hold, these are what its batteries look like. It takes a different kind than my big one. I can hold four of these extra batteries and an extra memory card. So I can go backpack if I fully charge all this before I leave because I have no way to charge it once I'm out in the woods. I can go backpack for at least two weeks and still be taking pictures and still have um, battery power and not have run out of space. So I think that's a fabulous deal. And then I've got a battery charger that fits that battery as well. Very similar to the other one, just takes a different battery form. Um, so that's my favorite on the go and when I don't want to carry as much weight. Now it doesn't have a big zoom, so if you want to get a picture of a bald eagle in that tree over there, this is not going to be your camera. For that kind of shots, that is why there exists big, heavy, expensive <laughs> lenses like this. Other things I use, but not a whole lot. Um, this is a little really cheap, um, I don't even know if this exists anymore because I've had it for 15 years or something. Um, it's a wide-angle extender, and I can put this actually on the lens that's recording right this moment, and it makes a little, not a full fisheye, but a little more of a fisheye. I don't use this very often, but occasionally for astro night shots, and it's not the highest quality. Some Someday maybe I'll get a better lens for that, but I do use that occasionally. And then, oh, shutter release. So if you wanted to, if you've ever seen any of my photos with the star trails, where you can see like the stars look like they're circling the um, North Star, stuff like that, or even just if you um, have your camera on your tripod, this plugs into the side of the camera, and then instead of um, instead of clicking this button, you can click this button. And one of the advantages there is when you you do if you're, even if you're careful and you do the pressure of pushing this button, you can get some camera shake. And if you're doing especially night photography or low light or anything, that camera shake can make everything look blurry. So this allows me to 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 fire the camera without camera shake. And then if you want, like those star trail ones are created by leaving the camera shutter open for like 24 minutes. So you do have to have a camera that has a bulb setting. These both do. That was another thing that was important to me in a small camera because most do not. Um, that allows you to basically just, the shutter will stay open as long as you're holding this button down. Now I don't want to stand out there in the cold when it's below zero in the middle of the night to take pictures of the stars with my finger on that button for 24 minutes. And by that time, my breathing and whatever would have completely shaken the photo and it would be all blurry. So this has a, a neat little function of like a lock. You can either just press the button in, kind of like pressing the shutter, or you can press it inside the little lock. And then I can just let that hang as my camera's on the tripod and I can even go back in the house and sit beside the fire and come back 24 minutes later and let go of the button. So I do use that not very often, but it is absolutely essential to be able to do a few of those kinds of shots. And then I got this little tiny remote, um, this little, little guy, and this just fires like, 
if I'm trying to take a picture of Burley and I, or something else, or in the garden, or me holding onions, or whatever else, and because I do film everything myself, um, this I can, it's used as a wireless signal, so I can, as long as I get on the right side of the camera, I can point at the camera and click fire and set it to either take a picture in immediately or in a few seconds and then I, that allows me to get some of the, the photos because I don't have a second person to take them. So that thing's pretty inexpensive and it's handy for a lot of things and it sometimes it's handier than setting the 10 second timer on the camera and then running to where I want to take the picture and then running back and so on. It's nice to be able to take a few with the remote. Um, so that is this gear and oh and then I get asked about photo editing I don't really honestly I um, use the free I have a, a Mac laptop this is what every video you have ever seen has been edited with it's quite a few years old now and is um, has been a real workhorse processing videos make even even this thing uh, wind up and, and overheat and whatever, but it still has been doing it. So this does great. Um, most Macs, uh, probably all Macs, come with a free editor. It used to be called iPhotos, now I think it's just called Photos. And it, I use it mostly for organizing my pictures. I've just found it to be convenient for that. But it does have a few basic edit functions. And so basically the only thing I ever edit is, is often a little bit of cropping. If I've got a beautiful bird sitting on a branch here, but there's some funny, you know, twig sticking in here, you know, I'll just crop that edge of the photo off or something like that. And occasionally a little bit of lightening or darkening, but no photos you see of mine are actually edited with a professional editor like Photoshop or anything like that to really change anything if I'm you know, I'm either just cropping something out because I want to concentrate what I'm focusing the picture on or slightly lightening or darkening something to to match more of what my eye could actually see to make it look more realistic because the camera you know if your eye could see different shades of light from 1 to 100 for example the camera can only see from like 45 to 65 so it, it, a camera's just pretty blind with the very dark shades and the very bright shades so sometimes you do have to adjust just a bit to get it to look a little more like what your eye can perceive because our eyes are way more sensitive and awesome than uh, even expensive cameras um, Video editing, I also just use the free um, iMovie, which again I think is now called Movies uh, Editor that came with my Mac, and it's it's pretty basic and does everything I need, and again, every video you've ever seen on here has been processed that way. So that's what I use for that. Now I want to show you the lens that is taking this video. Okay, you will probably be able to see the uh, difference in the video quality here, especially as the sun is setting outside and so it's getting darker. This is now being filmed with my little tiny backpacking camera that belongs in this case. Um, it does really phenomenal photos, especially of landscapes and stuff. Like I said, it's not great for zooming in on wildlife that's far away or something, but it is not as good at video quality unless there is a lot of light. So I don't use it much for video, but I wanted to swap that out so I could show you this lens, which is what was recording. Um, I do indeed have two identical Canon ADD bodies here, and that is, well, that's primarily, um, for many, many years I just had the one, and now I have a second one, which was necessitated by a filming project I'm doing for somebody else where I simply had to have two good cameras running at the same time. So now I have two of these, and... That's handy because now I pretty much leave these two lenses on them all the time without swapping, unless I need my portrait lens here, my fixed 50 millimeter for something. And the lens that's on here is just actually the cheap kit lens that came with my first um, 80, uh, not even my first 80D body. I think this originally came back with my 30D that I got when I was in my teens. Um, but it's the cheapest uh, kit lens that comes probably with any SLR you buy unless you buy the body only. If it has a lens with it, it will probably have this one if it's a, a Canon. And I have found this to be overall very good. It's not phenomenal, it's not the highest quality glass, but it does a really good job. Um, and that, that zoom range from 18 to 55 is pretty decent, and this lens records almost all the videos you guys have ever seen. And again, I've got extra of these hot shoe plates or whatever those plates are quick release plates so I can um, put any one of my cameras on the tripod and again I can move it around and of course with a camera you know lens this little this is super sturdy um, but it's sturdy enough even for this big guy so that is the setup that um, that I use that's pretty much all the camera gear 
And again, the biggest thing about photography is learning how to take pictures, but if you know that, then having some good gear is helpful. So there is other great gear out there. This is the stuff I love. It works really well for me. It does everything I need. It's what's created the wildlife photos you guys see if you follow my photography, like on Facebook or Instagram. Um, it's what's created all the videos you see here on YouTube and so on. So this is what I use and I have been extraordinarily happy. Oh, I do all natural light as well. I don't have any um, hot shoe flashes and even the built-in flashes I never use. I leave all three of my cameras set to never flash. I just, I don't like the quality of flash photography with just the built-in cameras flashes. They're, they're just not very good. So um, anyway. I think that's all the questions. If you have another question about my camera gear that I have forgotten to answer, let me know down below. Um, I will, if you go right under this video down to the show more tab, I will have a link to that store page on Amazon where they conveniently let me link to all of the gear I use. I do make a, um, they do pay me a percentage if you buy things through that link. It doesn't cost you anything, but just so you know, in the interest of full disclosure, but I did not buy any of this gear because of that. This is the gear I have been using for many, many years, and um, the only new part of it really is having the second body here. So, and it's exactly like my first one, just a little bit newer. Anyway, hopefully that covers your questions and is helpful if you are wondering what cameras do I use to record this stuff. Oh yeah, and the one other thing I forgot. I carry all this stuff, and by all this stuff I mean all the smaller parts and not actually either of my bodies and lenses because at that point they don't fit in this cool little Tamarack um, backpack. I actually got this because somebody else had bought it brand new and was just throwing it away. They didn't want it, still had the tags on it, so I got it from that pile. I don't very often actually carry this with me, but it does have a lot of beautifully nice padded compartments that are great for holding my various things like my shutter releases. Of course, you can put whatever you wanted wherever you want, but this is just my system. They live in here. Um, extra batteries and cards go in these two little pockets. You could strap a backpack along here, but like I said, I'm not usually actually hiking anywhere with this pack. Uh, so I don't tend to use that. Um, oh, this is really cool. One of you lovely subscribers made this for me. This is a little hot shoe. And I can show you it's not quite big enough for this um, lens, but I use it on the one that's recording right now. It slips right on there and is a beautiful... There goes Like that. It's a beautiful little snow shield, and I can twist it wherever I want and made this for me so I could film things outside when it's snowing without getting my camera soaked and I think it's really cool and it disconnects like that which is perfect because then it almost fits the hallway into this backpack those corners stick out but but that is just all right so if you're wondering what that sheet of wood is in there and then the big main pocket here um, contains my you know extra battery chargers because I have multiple of these because I bought multiple batteries and they all tend to come with one um, filters which I pretty much never use um, and this is where I keep you know my extra lenses like that and like this and my extra battery packs and actually I will carry this littlest camera in its case in here if I'm not you know using this on a on a backpack or a hike or something at the moment because it fits in here nicely but by the time I put all of that in here um, and I've got little lens wipes and <sighs> cleaning stuff and all of that anyway by the time I put that all in here this is pretty full this is the actual camera that is still filming and this guy never go in this backpack um, so that's how I kind of keep track of my stuff and have it all contained. Oh, one more thing I forgot. I have a pretty good pile of these, some in um, one terabyte and some in uh, half terabyte or 500 gigabyte sizes. Um, I use these as my external hard drives to back up my images and videos because, as we can maybe see here, oh yeah, my laptop currently has almost 82,000 images on it, and I back up this stuff 
and I'm not kidding, all the time. I actually have two copies of everything, um, other than whatever's on my computer. I keep a, one of these at my house and a duplicate copy of everything at a friend's house, just in case there would ever be like a house fire or something like that, that would cause me to lose it, because my photos are one of the more irreplaceable things I have, and I would really rather not lose them. So I do have double backups of everything, and have them in two separate locations for that reason. And I've had other drives in the past, and I've always ended up having drive failures. I have yet to have a drive failure on one of these. Um, they are a little more pricey, being a solid state drive, but that's worth it to me because I haven't had a, um, a failure of one yet. I'm sure one will sooner or later, but that's why I have doubles. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.